You know, in the original Twilight Zone, Rod Serling wrote an episode called Judgment Night. Nehemiah Persoff played the lead about a German U-boat commander. We find out is reliving uh, the the uh, the attack on a uh, Allied uh, forces uh, that uh, basically is haunting his memories. Basically, he's repeating it again like a Groundhog Day in hell. A very good episode, but when Night Gallery uh, season one episode of Lone Survivor came out, it got a little bit of criticism in the in the, the critical press because Lone Survivor sort of is is a first cousin to Judgment Night. But the way it's presented is a little bit more direct reference to the uh, Carlton and DC comic horror style of the late 60s, early 1970s. And what was really good about this, it was directed by the great Gene Levitt. Searling wrote it, of course, but the main character who plays the survivor of the piece, the literal survivor, is the great Canadian actor John Calicos of Star Trek and General Hospital and Battlestar Galactica fame. Personally, one of my favorite actors of all time. John Calicos is so good as an actor. When I was a kid, he was the first person that I knew by his last name. I was only five, six years old. And anytime I'd see him on the, on the TV in a show, I would stay up or basically ask my mom and dad to watch because I, I really couldn't keep my eyes off him. Very, very strong actor. But in this plot, uh, there's a ship at sea in 1915 to Lusitania. It comes upon a shipwreck with a lone survivor. Uh, and the crew sees to its astonishment that a ship in question is a Titanic, which was wrecked three years earlier. Now, the only survivor is brought on board. He's dressed in women's clothing. But the person, again, is not a woman. He's John Coleco, the man that survives. He explained he was terrified and took the bad way out by dressing up as a woman uh, because, you know, women and, and children cliche. Now, he parlays to the doctor that uh, his ship is hit by a tor torpedo, uh, and will be sunk in 18 minutes. Now, the doctor is stunned at the, uh, at the prediction. So the survivor says, he's beginning to understand that I'm a flying Dutchman, damned and doomed, an eternity of lifeboats, rescues, and forever being picked up by doomed ships as a punishment for his cowardice to board the Titanic. But you got to understand, in 19, early 1970s, there was a lot of uh, horror uh, tropes about uh, doomed ships. And the Coleco's character was kind of talked Serling played him like, you know, the fear in many people that maybe certain certain aspects of the Titanic sinking and different ships like that are doomed. Like the, the Flying Dutchman uh, uh, is, a, is a trope. Even in order to run it, the, uh, you know, the, the Phantom Ship uh, legend anyway. Now, just as predicted, a torpedo hits a Lusitania. The scene then shifts and we're aboard a different ship, but the action just like before. The, the crew sees that the wrecked ship is a Lusitania which in their time was sunk, uh, you know, four decades before. A zoom in on the Captain Crewman reveals the ship's name, the Andrea Dory of the famous uh, disaster at sea off the coast of Massachusetts in 1956. Now, again, if you've seen Judgment Night before and loved this, you saw Lone Survivor and say, well, maybe Searling was lazy. He was kind of, uh, you know, going back on old tropes. But I think what he had here, he wanted to do something of a ghost ship but not only a ghost ship, but the ghosts. Like, we don't know if Calicos is really alive or he's a physical manifestation of a living ghost. It's never really talked about. And the people on the ship are basically saying, you know, what, what the hell are you talking about? But for the shortness of the episode and the, the way it goes fast, just like a good 8 to 12 page comic book, half, uh, half a comic book, if you run this for 20 pages in a comic book or 35 minutes, it's not going to work. Because you got to, uh, like the Serling, hit him with the hit him with the end. <coughs> See, we know how this is going to end because if you've been following, you know, the history of problems, uh, you know, at sea, uh, Titanic led to Lusitania, Lusitania led to the Andrea Doria, Andrea Doria led to various, uh, you know, modern day shipwrecks and problems. Uh, you know, it uh, it doesn't, uh, it's not a hard stretch. Now. Uh, it's not really an expensive looking episode, but for me, it, it uh, hits form. I give it three and a half stars out of five. I will give it a, uh, uh, only three stars. But again, this is just as my, my, I'm saying this in many, many ways. John Calicos was so much a big part of my youth. Him and Robert Shaw and Oliver Reed, not saying this is the same type of actor, but that kind of style. This was long before Patrick Stewart and Ian e. McKellen. And uh, Lawrence Harvey too as well. You gotta understand, Night Gallery had a lot of British, great British actors on the show, 
and uh, having Calico's there and Lawrence Harvey because Calico's has that uh, you know that European background as well uh, it's just tremendous but for me it's 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 best to watch night gallery on a dark night after nine o'clock in November December January where you know we're not going to see the sun for a while but don't watch this on a boat or a plane it's going to freak you right out because you might be looking down over to your ne the next door neighbor and said are you are you a ghost are you a plane ghost or your ship ghost can you imagine this would be shown in a in a lobby uh, you know on a on a big ship going going through the COVID right now? Can you imagine? Imagine if the, the COVID ship they were showing this episode on somebody's laptop. Wouldn't that freak a lot of people out? I think it would freak me out. Anyway, that's my uh, review and uh, salute to uh, Lone Survivor. If you like what we're doing in the Night Gallery uh, mini podcast or reviews, please let us know. Like, comment, subscribe, tell your friends. But if you're if you're going to make critical comments, they're going to try to bully me or harass me, like a couple of people have done in recent days. You will be el blocto, say like my Spanish side of my family, el gano. Be courteous. I'm courteous to you guys because some people know this episode and some people don't. I don't give away uh, all the episode, but like I said, be kind and courteous because be Canadian. Don't be American sometimes, and you know what I'm talking about. Have a good day. Bye.